In this demo, I want to uh, look again at some of the input uh, parameters that are given to the model in runtime, meaning these are parameters that are not uh, hardwired in the Fortran source code. And so we go in the example directory, we press L, and we go in Coriolis, press L. So now we're in the run direct in the place where we run the model. And as you remember, the input directory contains uh, you know some input files with parameters that are used in runtime. So Coriolis.in is the main uh, file containing the main input parameter. These are standard input parameters. And as we saw before, if we look for the string edit, we find places that you may want to change things, like the, the tiling, meaning the decomposition uh, or the partition of the domain in the x and y direction when you run a parallel job. Um, and as we know, uh, when you run a parallel job, each CPU uh, computes the solution on a portion of the grid and and that's why we run in parallel. You know the number of time steps that's another thing you may want to change uh, the number uh, of how often you write the history file meaning the solution to disk to, to a file and you know parameters like bottom drag coefficients and so forth and the name of the files where you're going to store the output in this case we're putting stuff in the out directory and as we saw before uh, if you go further down, there's a glossary with the description of all these parameters. So that's the typical main file. But in our case, we were running also the drifters, or floats. And so there's an additional input file that needs to be provided. And uh, this file can have any name you want. And the name of this file is determined if you go back in the Coriolis.in. And you go a little bit up. So these are in, uh, these are would be is determined by these input ASCII parameter files file names, which are additional file names. And you find here there's this um, uh, fposnum, which is the float input ASCII parameter file. And and so as you see, we put it in the input directory and we call it floats.in. But we could call it whatever we want. But in this case, it's called floats.in. So let's open this floats.in, and let's go to the very top so that we can we can uh, learn a little bit of how to change this float stuff. And so you can read this, it's pretty self-explanatory, but um, parameters that you care are, for example, n floats, which is the number of floats, in this case I pick three, and then are the other parameters that you want to configure are the initial locations of the float. So for example, here I have three floats, so I have three lines, and uh, you know you find that there's various columns of things that you have to initialize for every float, and you can see that for each column, the parameter, for example, ft0, is described here. So this would be the float release time. And that means that you may want to release the float not right away, but later during the model run at a particular time. Then you have the initial x location, the y location, the z location, and so forth. And so, for example, in this particular case, I have that the x location is equal to 10, uh, which in my case is uh, 10 grid units. So it's, a, uh, it's the grid point number 10. And this also is grid point number 10 for the y. And for the z direction, I'm just using 0, which means that I'm releasing the surface, uh, you know, at the I'm releasing the, um, the, the drifter at the surface. And you can learn, uh, you know, how to change these other parameters. And, um, and um, you know, further instruction of how to do this are in this glossary file over here. Uh, you can find that there's a, there's a, you know, there's more you know, detailed description of what these uh, configuration parameters are. So you may want to play if you wanted to add additional floats or, uh, or you know, do some particular simulations that interest you. Okay, that's all for the floats.